When you're applying online at primeinc.com on your application, make sure when it asks you where you refer to by an active prime driver, make sure to click on yes. The box below that, make sure to put my driver code, Strexa. Now let's do some trucking. So, <laughs> oh man, I'm down here in uh, Decatur, Indiana. I'm supposed to be picking up a uh, preloaded trailer and I am hooked to it right now. Did my pickup trailer inspection. Second trailer in a row. Hub seal leaking. And the seal number on the back of the trailer right here doesn't match my paperwork. Spoke to a gentleman here at the Decatur office. Uh, they're updating my paperwork and they said give them about an hour or two and then they were going to pull in my trailer to fix that left rear hub seal on the trailer so <laughs> this was a one of the other reasons too why i switched over from the inedible side to the food grade side is because i was having so many uh trailer issues but so far not a great start on the food grade side prime no longer uses the pre-pass these uh pre-pass units they use a, a new software that's built into these qualcomm omnitrax qualcomm's called DriveWiz. so and if I don't turn in this pre-pass before I believe it's like the end of March. They're going to charge us drivers like 200 bucks for them or something stupid like that. So I'm going to make sure to get that thing turned in and I'm going to be getting my truck washed. Get some gloves on. Get this hood pop. Give a little jiggle when you wiggle. A little jiggle when you wiggle. There we go. Let's pop her. All right. I guess I could put some, uh, oh shit, some windshield washer fluid in here. My coolant looks good. One power steering uh. looks good. All my hoses look good. Everything looks good. My alternator belt looks good. All my steer tires good. All my steering components, everything down here looks really good. My brake pads look good. Everything over here looks good. I thought I was gonna have to add some, uh, Add some more coolant, but I guess I don't. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> I lost the damn cap to this, so I was hoping it wouldn't break. Like it wouldn't fall over and under my bed and spill everywhere, so I kind of got lucky with this. Uh, all my hoses are connected. Everything looks good. Steer tire's good. All my steering components are good. My U-bolts are good. Everything looks really good. My brakes look good. I just gotta check my check my oil. Now I gotta go throw this away. Check this oil right quick. Ah. I'm pretty sure my oil levels are good. We always check her and make sure she's good, you know what I mean? Alright, let's see here. Yeah, she looked good. Everything looked good. Yeah, we good. Let's close her up. Sometimes this thing could be a little pain in the butt. I think we got it right there. All right, cool. Bam. Do what we got here. Bam, right there, baby. All right. On the inedible side, the front tires didn't go up and down based on the weight of the trailer because right now i'm currently empty so these front trailer tires go up when the trailer hits a certain amount of weight these front tires uh will drop to balance out the weight so this is the second trailer i gotten in a row that had a, a hub seal leak and um so the decatur indiana terminal got this replaced took them about an hour maybe hour and 15 minutes so they put a new seal new cover uh they didn't clean the rim obviously but it's not leaking anymore so that's good spinner look i'm riding spinners I'm riding spinners. Yeah, everything on uh, on my truck and trailer. We ready to roll, baby. We are ready to roll. All right, so I'm warming up my truck. We're about to take off. But before, I'm going to uh, Manuka, Illinois to drop this off to get to get washed at the Prime Terminal. Now I have my in-transit heat lines hooked up. This is empty. I'm gonna show you how I take off my in-transit heat lines so that way I don't really make a mess. All right, so these are the in-transit heat lines that run coolant to keep the tanker warm basically to keep it hot the product so that way it doesn't thicken up and so that way you're able to pump off so what i do 
First thing I do before I disconnect my lines and close the valves on the trailer side, what I do is I'm gonna close all my valves on, on this side where the eco heater box is, right here and on the truck side. So I'm gonna close all my valves. That's the first one. Second one, the third one. So I got all my valves closed. Now I'm gonna go around to the other side. Now y'all don't have to do it like I'm doing it. I'm just showing y'all how I do it. All right, let me get around here. All right, so what I do is I'm gonna close all these valves, the left one and the right one. Before I disconnect these, I'm gonna open this valve down here so it helps relieve the pressure so that way when I take these off, it's not squirting out everywhere. So that's how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I do it. So I just pull that back, pull it out. This one I'm gonna pull back. A little bit will come out. All right, so now that's on there. So there we go. Yeah, so you definitely wanna make sure that you disconnect your in-transit heat. And if you're running your pump, make sure you disconnect your hydraulic lines, which are these lines right here. You definitely wanna make sure that you're disconnecting them before you <laughs> disconnect from your trailer. That wouldn't be good, you'll rip them right off. Yeah, but we're ready to roll. So once I get there, I won't have to disconnect my in-transit heat lines. Hey, 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 super bright out here today. That's what I gotta say. So I'm down here at the Manuka terminal, the prime terminal here in Manuka, Illinois and I'm dropping my empty, dirty trailer. Uh, they told me to go ahead and bobtail down to Loaders, which is right up the street. I got a preloaded trailer I gotta grab, and then I gotta go stop by a vape shop. I gotta grab some more juice for my vape. Vape! Dun, 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 dun. Here at Loaders right now. Dang, boy, whoo. All right, warning. That railroad track is bumpy. I will have to go slower. Now, I'm not sure the process here. Uh, they told me to bobtail down here. And I am not sure the exact process. I don't know if I just go up to find the trailer that my dispatcher told me to grab that's preloaded and the paperwork's on the back or on the front. I have no clue, guys, no clue at all. So we're gonna find out. You have reached your destination. The destination is on your left. Am I supposed to do not block a skill for tankers only? Okay, all right. Well, let's go in here and see. All right, so I did not know I needed to hop on the scale. So I had to back up and hop on the scale, check in. Now I gotta go find the trailer, hook up to it, hook up my in-transit heat lines, and then hop back on the scale to get my paperwork. So, no, that's not my trailer. That is, that's a Milky Way trailer. Oh, my boy Sean was right. We do an edible here too, okay. MT9882, I've rocked with that one before. It's got a leaking pump on it. I bet you it has not been fixed. 307026. 307026. Oh yeah, it's a little bumpy over here. Slow it down a little bit. Bounce it. Be like juicy j and bounce it three zeros all right let's see here three zeros oh right there bam right in front of me three zero seven zero two six all right all right i'm gonna get hooked up to her first i gotta turn this bad boy around sure let me move it just a little bit more so i can see make sure i cleared that Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, let me get over there a little bit more. Ta-da! There we go. Okay, let me make sure this is the, uh, this is the one. Three, zero, seven, zero, two, six. That's it right there. All right. Louise, bro. Oof. Dang. I gotta whack the crap out of that bad boy. Had my toilet paper flying. Got a little shaky up in this bad boy. All right. Threw my chapstick around. We're hooked up to her. Let's go hop on this scale.
I'm going to kind of creep because uh, got all kinds of potholes and crap over here. Yeah, after I get on this scale and I get my paperwork, I'm going to pull over here to the shoulder so I can do my depart call. Receiver is only like 146 miles away. I can't deliver it today. My appointment's for tomorrow, so I am going to head to Manuka. All right, let's get on this scale. Here we go. Okay, that should be good right there. All right, go in here and get my paperwork now. Right here in this office, it looks like I'm 78,000, like 900 basically. All right, now that I know the trailer that I grabbed, I'm gonna go ahead and write that down here on my trip sheet. Trailer number is 307026. And I already did my uh, pickup trailer inspection. Uh, I got all my paperwork. That's for my old, my last trip. Okay, and I am going to throw this, excuse me, put this all into here, and I'm going to be heading back to Nuka Terminal so I can shower. I need to take a shower. That's what I got to do. I'm headed over to the uh, receiver right now, just west of Milwaukee. What the heck is this thing? Where is this? I'm trying to remember where this is going. Where's my damn paperwork at? Watertown, Wisconsin. Peach pear, it's actually pretty good. Uh, breakfast bowl, I'm gonna eat this breakfast bowl. We are gonna keep rolling. All right, so I made it to the receiver. On my paperwork in the Prime app, uh, it says a customer's name is uh, Clayson Quality Coatings, but everywhere here on their signs, it says Clayson Quality Chocolate. Yes, I'm at some type of big candy factory delivering some of this palm oil. Um, in the load notes on this load, it told me to pull around to the east side and pull straight back and then I had to call them and I just took my paperwork in there. I just went got went in there and checked in. Moving my paperwork out of the way here. Take a little sip of that right there, a little sip of that coconut water. And I believe I'm gonna have to pull forward. They told me to pull, when I was on the phone with them, they told me to pull underneath this bay. So they had me pull underneath this bay, but I believe they're gonna be unloading me out of this box right here. Now, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing based on where I'm parked at, and this is the only thing I could think of where an inlet would be. Also, in the load notes, it said, it says the customer hooks up and it's gonna pump off my load, and it said drivers are not allowed to go to the top of the dome. So I had to bring the paperwork in here and leave it on the rack, but they already took it, looks like. All right, so now we just, uh, now we just wait for them to come out and they're probably gonna tell me that I need to pull forward would be my guess. I'm just gonna wait right here until someone comes out and tells me. All these uh, all these big tanks look fancy and new. Well, it's a lot better in here that I, that I cleaned to clean my floor. Nice and shiny. All right, so this guy over here walking with the safety vest, he told me that I need to have my bumper for, I can't even see what I'm looking at right here in front of this concrete block. So, we're gonna go ahead and move her forward. Okay, Ooh, maybe I might have went through. Sweet. Yep, he said he wanted me to be lined up right with this guy right here, this concrete block. Ta-da! So, it's almost perfect. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna be, uh, we're gonna be unloading me out of here. So now I am all set up. First time over here at this place. More challenges, learning new stuff, going new places. It's trucking, baby. All right, since we're in the right spot, I'm gonna go ahead and, I was parked, I had my brake, I had my brake pulled, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the bags on my trailer. Pushing my parking brake, now I'm gonna release my trailer brakes. And I'm gonna wait a minute so that way all the air comes out, drops it back into that trailer drops that ass down it usually takes about mm, could take 30 seconds to a minute roughly so i just let it do its thing and let it drop and then i just like i said i wait 30 seconds to a minute and then i'll pull my parking brake and i'm not sure exactly how long i'll be here but oh another thing too what i what i like to do is like when i'm driving at night well 
sometimes I forget, but sometimes this thing could be really, really bright, this Qualcomm, so I'll just turn that, um, turn this down. All right, I'm gonna see if my T-Mobile box, my internet box I use for my internet, this is what I use, um, I'm gonna actually see if it works. Let's see if it works here in Watertown, Wisconsin, because my internet box did not work in Mondovi, uh, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, need to throw. Oh shoot, dang it. Tripping over stuff here. All right, I'm gonna let this bad boy fire up right here and I need to break down my, got some Fruity Pebbles, y'all. Love me some Fruity Pebbles, man. I'm a cereal monster, man. I'll tear up cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I love me some cereal. And it's the easiest thing. Just get you a paper bowls, paper spoons, well not paper spoons, <laughs> plastic spoons, and you good. So, and this is my emergency thumper dumper bucket, the Luggable Lou. Got this for 35 bucks at Bass Pro Shops in Springfield. And uh, then I use these eight gallon, uh, eight gallon trash bags from Walmart, and this is a perfect little setup just for emergencies if I need to take a dumper. But it's mainly for my trash, and I just keep her tucked right here. Your connection is weak. Okay, so my T-Mobile box doesn't seem to like Wisconsin. Let me see here. Actually, I need to... Okay, is this even working? I gotta turn up the... Uh, my display here, my brightness, so I can be able to see, okay. So it is working a little bit I because I need to actually uh, try to work on my next thumbnail and I actually need to upload some photos. I need to transfer over some photos to uh, my MacBook here. I am actually uh, done. They got, uh, got me all unloaded. I did have to hook up my, um, I did have to hook up my hose and uh, put the straps on, but they use their pump. So. We are done here at the candy factory, so I got to submit my paperwork, do my depart call, and then it looks like I'm gonna be had. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna be heading back up to Manuka, Illinois. I'm here at uh, this place called Snack King in Freeport, Illinois. I just got done getting checked in. I got some canola oil on this uh, on this load. Uh, the lady that I spoke to, she was a, she was a sweet older lady. I checked in over here and she told me I need to back in over by dock A. When I first came through here, I thought I was supposed to come in this way, but it says, stop, do not enter. <laughs> so I had to go ring around the Rosies to get turned around around here. And uh, <laughs> oh, that, that was fun. I, I finally got turned around and found my way back here to get lined up the proper way. So. All right, so I'm gonna be go backing up to dock A. So there's A, B, and C. The one where this trailer's at in the middle, that's B, so I gotta go to the left of that. So we're gonna line her up here. She said, don't back all the way up to it. So I wanna make sure I don't back all the way up to it. Nobody behind me. All right. I want to make sure, make sure I don't hit anybody. Ta-da! Uh, she said that she would let the receiving department know that I was here. She said, don't back all the way up to the dock, so... I don't know how far they want me to back up to it so don't back all the way up to it so i'm just gonna hang out here i guess i do not know i'm gonna assume that i'm pumping off so i'll buy dock a oh i wonder if i'm going in right here I'm gonna take a good guess that I'm going in here. See, that's what coconut oil looks like when it's dried up. I think I think that's where I'm gonna be pumping off at. That would be my guess. 
Yeah, I don't see anything back here. I'm going to be pumping off. I got to hook up my hydraulic lines. gotta go hook up our hose so I'm actually getting unloaded in this stainless steel cabinet right there so this is the inlet where I'm at snack king oh this guy uh, dropped his keys I'll let him know he dropped his keys see here okay so I need a female okay here we go right here bam I think I might have just enough room with this hose. Ta-da! Put that in my back pocket, I guess, for now. Oh, that's kind of moving a little bit. There was a... Where, where did I put it at? Oh, right here. This is what I need. Shove this right in the hose. Little, little shimmy shimmy. Okay, that's better. There we go. I just use these little shims so that way the hose doesn't slide around. It gives it something to bite on. So that end is good. Okay, that's good. Let me tighten up. Uh, let me tighten this bad boy up here. It looked like it was moving a little bit. Perfect. Now that's nice and tight. Oh shoot, there's my straps. Over here blowing away. Over here blowing away. He went to grab the sample. He said it'd take about 10 minutes for him to, uh, to run a sample, but he told me to go ahead and hook everything up. So that's what I'm doing. And I always put a strap here on the top too, so this cap doesn't decide it wants to blow off for whatever reason. There we go. All right, so now that this is, uh, it's almost pretty much ready to go. So here I got the sample for him. I used their bucket, so that way nothing dripped out when we got the sample. The top of the dome is uh, vented. So we'll go up here, I'll show you right there. So tops vented, always make sure you vent the dome when you're pumping off or if you're getting unloaded by the receiver. Got my hydraulic lines all hooked up. They're secure, nice and tight. Uh, once he comes out here, gives me the okay. I'll go ahead and open up these valves on the back of the trailer. I'll open up these two valves, this one and this one. So that way all the product comes down, I can start pumping it off. And I'll have to turn on my high hydraulic uh, pump my PTO outside of my truck. But right now I'm just gonna wait for this gentleman to come out here, give me the okay, open up the valves on the back, and uh, turn on my hydraulic pump, pull it back and we'll start pumping off. All right, so he just came out of the door, so it looks like we're gonna be good. I'm gonna turn my PTO switch on, and I'm gonna bump my RPMs up to 1200. Let me grab these gloves so I don't keep wasting disposable gloves. 
Hey buddy, am I okay to use this for my vlogs? Okay. Is that okay? I just want to, and I found your keys. Okay. Yeah, All right, cool. I just wanted to ask because, man, I had one, one security guy. I wasn't even, it wasn't even on and I was just sitting in my truck and I just, I don't know, I guess I must have forgot it out of my head and he came out. Anyways, we, we good? Yeah. All right. Let me open these valves up here. Is, is it all is it all three inch all the way back? Okay. This side here, the other side no. What's that? This side it is, and the other side is not. The other side, what size is it? Three. It is it okay. Three. Three to two to reducer? Yeah. I got you. I've done milk tankers, but not real tankers. Same kind of It's the same thing, yeah, yeah. Personally, I like to call it skateboard. What's that? Skateboard, flatbed. Yeah, flat, okay, you like that? Flatbed? Okay. I like doing chains and not having a real ETA. We got to have an ETA, but... I got you. I get there, I get there. I got you. That was my second choice, because hey. I never thought of reefer, because I was... When you... I, held, I held it. I did, I did box. I did flatbed, late running to mid uh -huh. I went to reefer for... He did 20 and fall time I did uh, your driving. I got you. About shelf 10 deep and counts. Nice. How long have you been here? About two and a half years. Okay. You like it? More chill, laid back? I try to be because I, I know it's, I've been in these shoes and I've been placed for the other assholes. Oh. So. I won't even need to comment. You already know. So. <laughs> why? I want people to be welcome us back here. You were very welcoming, man, when I got here. Because when I first got here, I went I went past this first to turn into here to scale, and then I saw stop, do not enter. So I, I ended up getting turned around. But I, you know, when you're a truck driver and you're like, you pass your stop, and you're like, I can't go in that way, but I can't back up, you know. So, but anyways, I got turned around. That lady, the older lady, she was really sweet and nice. She knows the in and out of the place. I got you. What kind of snacks you guys do here? Uh, we make potato chip, corn chip, potato chip, popcorn. Is that what I saw? Is that a potato loader over there? Yeah. I got you. Okay. We I saw do, I saw some potatoes. Yeah, the... we do potatoes every other week. Pretty much. I got you. If, uh, 80,000 pounds to 800,000 pounds of potatoes. That's a lot. That makes sense. And oh shit, what the hell is that? Oh, am I going backwards? Oh shit. Oh man. Oh man. What do you need? Do you need some of this? Here, give me another. Can you throw another bag on my shoulder? Here we go. Oh man.
Ah, shit. Rookie mistakes, man. That's a tough one to swallow right there. All right, so I finished getting pumped off. Basically what happened is, one, the customer does not have a check valve. A check valve would stop product from being able to be pulled out of the customer's tank and into my trailer. That's what happened. Uh, when I pulled the handle back on the trailer to start offloading, the pump was actually sucking the product from their tank into my trailer, which caused it to overflow on the top. So, so that means that this, this pump on this trailer has had previous repairs and the lines, the hydraulic lines were switched. So now I should have checked on the, on the motor. There's a little slit on the backside of the motor. You can see these two round spinning pistons and you can see them spinning. And when they're spinning out, outwards, that means you're offloading. So two things I didn't do properly here. One is I didn't ask the customer if they had a check valve, which I should have, so that's on me. The second thing is I should actually check the pump to make sure it was spinning in the correct direction. So definitely learned my lesson here. So I got the pump shut off, obviously, and they gave me, those were bags of cornmeal, spread it around to stop the spill. Uh, I contacted my dispatcher, sent him photos uh, to his email uh, he let me know that I needed to contact our safety department. This is the first situation where I've been in a, been in, or this is the first time I've been in this situation uh, regarding a spill. So the customer told me because of how large the spill was that a cleanup crew is going to have to come out here and clean it up before I get my paperwork and I can leave. So I'm done. I'm finished offloading. Now it's all, I'm empty. I contacted my dispatcher and then I had to fill out a macro 38, which is an incident report. Now, a macro 38 is not available through the Prime app on my phone, so I had to actually do it through my Qualcomm. I had to do a macro 38, which is a uh, accident report. So I had to fill out all this stuff here. You know, basically it asked if the police were involved, were there any injuries, was the cargo damaged, fill out all this stuff, you give them a des description of what exactly happened, uh, and then you just send it off. I did that. They messaged me back right away and they told me to call them. So I explained to them exactly what happened. And they said that they are <clears throat> gonna be calling a cleanup crew and they're gonna be calling me as the point of contact. So I have to wait for a cleanup crew to come out here. And then I am gonna be charged a $500 deductible. So that will be coming out of my check uh, as a lease driver. So this is just for you know people out there like, I'm like I said, I'm not perfect. Clear situation of I should have checked uh, one, I should have checked to make sure the pump was spinning in the correct direction. And two, I should have asked the customer if they had a check valve. So even if I, it was reversed and they had a check valve, it would not be able to suck any product back from the customer. So mistake, big mistake, just learn from it and you just get better from it. That's all you do. Um, I could sit here crying, uh, you know, I could sit here cry, I can whine. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that, you know, I didn't double check everything, you know, to make sure that I pump off smoothly. So this is on me. I've already taken ownership of it. Stuff happens. And I definitely learned from this one. That's for sure. That's a big mistake right there. So it is what it is. And we're just going to keep on rolling, man. Emergency response team. Emergency response team. Spill. The spill team is here. Man, I just, man, I feel like an idiot, man. Uh. I want to slap myself in the face, man. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let something like this get me down. I'm just showing you. I'm showing you my journey. I'm showing you that you. You know, mistakes are gonna happen. You know, the thing about with the mistakes, you gotta learn from them. So, I definitely learned from it. And Prime already sent me a message to let me know that they charged me the $500 deductible uh, for this incident. So, hard lesson learned. All right, so. Uh, Paskin and uh, Environmental Corporation is currently down here uh, and they are cleaning up the mess. So once they get done, uh, then the receiver will give me my paperwork because they're not going to give me my paperwork until the mess is actually cleaned up. Uh, once it's done, then I can get my paperwork, submit it and send it off. And then I'll be on to my next load. But this is just a learning experience. So always make sure to ask the customer if they have a check valve. So anytime there is an incident on the road, whether you're... <clears throat> in an accident, something happens with your load, like this one, you know, it leaked out. Any situations that you have a, a spill, you know, an accident, you have to contact safety. Uh, this is the first situation I've been in. Uh, 
this customer you know required a cleaning crew to come and clean up this mess uh, I understand uh, that's the most uh, I mean I've had little spills here and there uh, working on the inedible side but they were super cool about it now this place you know they requested a, a cleanup crew and all that stuff so I had to let dispatch know contact safety and my dispatcher said I had to fill out a macro uh, 38. As soon as I sent that off within 30 seconds, they told me to call them. So then I had to explain to them exactly what had happened. So, you know, it's a learning, it's a learning experience. It's how you handle yourself, uh, you know, in these situations. These situations are gonna happen. You just keep on, keep on rolling and you learn from your mistakes. Uh, since I'm getting a $500 dent in my pocket from this, I definitely will be making sure moving forward that I will be asking every receiver, A, do they have a check valve? And B, I'll be making sure that the pump is spinning the correct way. So, cause normally when you pull the lever back, it starts unloading. However, these lines reversed and the only way to tell is by looking at the pump itself, which I should have done. So this was all on me. I take full ownership of it. Shit happens and we're gonna move forward. They're still over there cleaning up the mess. The receiver told me to go ahead and hop on the scale so they can give me my paperwork. The receiver did say them just showing up and starting to clean it is good enough for them. So I'm hopping on the scale. I'm going to go get my paperwork right now. But then I'm going to go back to where they're cleaning the spill up and I'm going to wait for them to get finished and I'm going to take photos. 